Nobody asked, but I'm making a dress only Santa Claus and Mrs. Claus's daughter would wear if she existed, aka me. But before I could start making an absurdly unnecessary dress, I needed fabric, particularly this one. I'm cutting it into three rectangles to make the infamous corset bodice that every single dress out in the market should feature, and if it isn't, well then, it should have been done yesterday. I'm rambling. I'm sewing the three rectangles together and notching the middle to create a heart shape for the front half of the bodice. It looks pretty ugly and amateur if you ask me. It needs a lot of work, but now I've got to do the back. Of the highly rigorous and strict requirements I had for selecting my Christmas fabric, which I've been told by my sister doesn't reflect the spirit of Christmas at all, and more like the fabric for an ugly bridesmaid's dress, I really only valued one. It had to be as thick and luxurious as the stunning Matterhorn Mountain in Switzerland, or these red velvet cupcakes. Mmm, delectable. So I chose this masterpiece of fabric. After all, Christmas happens only once a year, so I've been told. And I had to go where everyone goes to seek out fabric, my backyard. No, just kidding. I had to go to the fabric store two years ago. But here's how my bodice is turning out like a badly taken care of patched up fabric thing. This is the back, as equally indistinguishable as the front. <laughs> Actually not joking about that, although it really should be a joke, I don't get out much and I've been hoarding this fabric like a rock collector collects coins, no rocks. So I folded this monstrosity of fabric into a giant triangle in preparation for cutting out the skirt. I'm trying to make a circle skirt because anything flat and not circular would be a disservice to this kind of elegant fabric, in my opinion, I know. It could be the ugliest fabric to some, and it is to my sister. Two years ago, I got three yards of this fabric for no reason. That's a lot of fabric without purpose. It's the equivalent of buying a tractor when you don't even have a farm to use it on. Because I didn't even know how to sew at the time. So here's the point I just cut off, and first of all, it's not perfectly round, but most importantly, it's not even big enough for my my waist, so I have to cut a little bit more to get it to fit. I guess I did my math wrong and it wouldn't be the first time. Anyway, now that I have my waist cut out of the skirt, I have to cut it to the right length. I probably shouldn't have used a highlighter marker for this, but I couldn't find my fabric chalk to use instead, and I didn't really look that hard either. I'm making the skirt 34 inches long because I like that length. Who doesn't? It's Christmas. 34 or nothing is what I always tell myself this time of year. No, I don't. I just came up with that. I folded it four times, but I'm going to cut it into two layers. A circle skirt engages with geometry, telling the world that your fashion choices are as well-rounded as the circumference of your waist. And I've lost count of how many fabrics I've destroyed trying to learn how to make circle skirts. It's all been leading up to this very moment. Or so I think. When I first got this fabric, I showed it to my sister and her immediate reaction was negative. I was so excited and said, oh, look at my fabric, like a child on Christmas morning looking forward to opening gifts. She replied with a sour looking face, why'd you buy that? It's so ugly. And I was like, oh, okay, I just accepted it. Point blank, why? Because I could see her point. This is the container I use for my fabric clips and I just remembered that this bowl used to be a ramen bowl. Repurpose trash. But even if she doesn't like this fabric, I happen to see its allure and its promise for being the perfect Christmas dress, even though it's got roses all over it and roses don't bloom in winter. She also said it was giving wedding vibes, not Christmas. She's like, what's Christmas about it? It's got roses. And I was like, the tinsel. I think the roses are made of tinsel. And she said it was giving ugly bridesmaids vibes. And what did I leave with from that conversation? That I'm going with not just Christmas, but a Christmas wedding. Isn't it wonderful how the holidays bring everyone together? So two years ago when I got this fabric, I had a vague promise and hope to my inner self that I would learn how to sew, and yet I still make brainless mistakes each and every day. I think fabric just makes me crazy because there's no hint of sense as to why I got so much and why I got such a ridiculous print. But people do unreasonable things all the time and I guess I'm just one of them. And here I thought I was unique, at least in that respect. This is my pink plush towel and I'm going to iron out my zipper on it because I don't have an ironing board. So I just use this towel so I don't catch my wood on fire because the iron gets hot. 
I know it sounds weird to iron out a zipper, but it's something you have to do because if you don't, the zipper won't listen to you. No, I mean the zipper is hard for me to sew on if it isn't ironed out and get it to look like it's not even there. When I first started sewing, it was so hard for me to make an invisible zipper look invisible because I didn't sew close enough to the inside edges and now it's just a random tradition that I've kept up with. So I just iron out the edges of my zipper so that when I sew it onto the fabric, it's easier for me. I have a whole bunch of zippers, but this is my only pink one. I've been hoarding zippers like I'm a kid who just came back from trick-or-treating and I have a whole bunch of candy stashed away under my pillows. I used to think sewing was an expression of a person's intimate fashion sense because they get to conjure up, you know, whatever they're making, similar to wearing clothes that you just buy. But sewing is really just another fast fashion industry. But instead of buying clothes every month, I just buy fabric to make clothes. Not to mention absurd clothes I simply wouldn't buy even if they were hanging in a department store, but because I made it myself, I love it. Funny how it works out like this. I'm placing the zipper on the side because it's easier access than having it in the back. The same way people jaywalk versus walking two blocks down the road to safely cross and then walking two blocks back to get to where you're going. It's stupid and it doesn't make sense, but making this whole dress actually doesn't make sense, so never mind. It wasn't my intention, but it seems I've walked myself straight into a 90s prom dress conspiracy. Because this looks like a 90s prom dress, doesn't it? I've been in here all day and he's finally showed up to say hi, but only because he wants me to play with him. He was acting a little cold so I put his sweater on that I made for him a few months ago. He acts like a different dog when he's dressed to impress. I'm sewing the inner fabric to the bodice's neckline just to make the top of the bodice look nice and finished. I'm trying not to sew over the pins because I vaguely remember breaking a needle in the past from sewing over one. Sometimes they don't break and sometimes they do, but I try not to. And then I'm going to iron the entire dress because it's been stored for a few years now and it's got these really harsh crease marks and fold lines and I want to get rid of them. The dress was nicely pressed after only a few thousand strokes. I have a superstition when it comes to leaving the iron plugged in, I always have to unplug it before I leave the room and then even after I've unplugged it a few seconds later, I run back in the room to make sure I unplug the iron. When I know I just did a second ago. opera gloves because it's Christmas. Why wouldn't I? I'll be spreading Christmas cheer just from the clothes on my very hands. I've never made gloves before in my life, but I'm going to give it a shot because I've always wanted to wear a pair of long ones. It's been one of my dreams in life. My first try wasn't very good, as you can see. I have a hole in this finger because I wasn't careful and the fabric frayed. I can't even use this now, so I'm going to use what I can from the remaining gloves good fabric to make a bow. And now I'm going to try to make a new set of gloves from my bad template. But I'm suspecting it'll be hard because this fabric frays so easily you don't even have to touch or breathe on it. It'll fray even if you just look at it. So I already know I'm going to have to overcast the edges of my fingers immediately and keep my fabric intact to wear in the end. I think the overcast stitching was putting too much tension and stress on the already sensitive fabric, so I'm going to use a lighter to melt the fabric since it's polyester and really plastic, so it'll seal the edges together. There are so many adjustments I'm making to these gloves just so they'll fit me accurately. The fingers look so funny like balloon hands or sausage fingers. I cut two folded squares of fabric from my first attempt at making a glove and I'm sewing them shut, turning them inside out, and sewing them together. Then I'm taking a smaller piece of fabric and placing it in the middle to create the bow. And then repeating the process to make another one and then I'll be hand sewing them to the top of the gloves. <laughs>